Some public figures just can't seem to escape any public scrutiny. No matter what they say or do or show in their actions, there will always be people scrutinizing every word. One of these figures is Hassan from the Hasanabi broadcast on Twitch, who's had his fair share of controversial statements, but no one really seems to acknowledge the real legitimacy of these statements he's making. This is so insane. America deserved 9-11, dude. It. I'm saying it. We're there to partner with them. Happy like, we, we, we f totally brought it on ourselves, dude. Holy sh**. We did. We f did. In a video game, whatever, hypothetically, politically. We f did, man. We did. Holy sh**. Look at the way that this dip is running his f mouth, justifying genocide right now. Like, how, how is this? How is anything I'm saying controversial? Like, we f fund the people who did 9-11 still to this day what the fuck is wrong with this dude didn't he go to war and like literally lose his eye because some mujahideen a brave soldier fucked his eye hole with their dick isn't that how he lost his dumbass eye because he got his eye hole uh, and hassan i know you've, you've been a, a bit in the news recently as well want to address real quickly you you made um, some comments that got a lot of pickup, talking about 9-11, uh, saying that Americans deserved 9-11. This was something you said on a Twitch stream that was very long, had a lot of other stuff in it. You deleted it and said that that was probably in a, not the best way of saying that. You also made a comment about Dan Crenshaw, the uh, Republican congressman who uh, had an eye injury in war, um, and said that that was not well delivered, sort of a poor attempt at humor. A anything else you want to add on that? Um, yes, yeah, certainly. Well, first of all, I said America, not Americans, and I still stand, like, I don't believe that any civilian deserves to die. Obviously, I'm anti-war. That was precisely what we were talking about uh, on my Twitch stream at the time. It was a six-hour broadcast, and that was a 10-second clip. And unfortunately, if they had uh, uh, shown the, pre the, the preceding 10 seconds right after that, the context would be rather clear. It was that I was criticizing American foreign policy, and the kind of jingoistic attitude that Dan Crenshaw was uh, repeating that justifies endless war, that leads to, that has led to nearly 7,000 brave young men and women uh, uh, to be sent overseas and only return in caskets. I think that's abhorrent. I think that's disgusting. So uh, you said America deserved 9 11. Did you mean that? Yeah. <laughs> It's so stupid. It's such a stupid video, dude. Another highly scrutinized figure on the left is Ethan Klein from the H3 podcast. He's had a lot of controversial statements in the past as well, but the controversial statements he does make are extremely understandable when you see the full context. Saying to what they're actually talking about there at the NRA meeting that's today in Texas, someone should bomb that building. <laughs> Okay, don't. I'll roll that back. <laughs> roll Immediately, that. he goes, all right, that was ridiculous that he said that. But it's over. He, that they was clipped, it. That's it. He cli they clipped it saying someone should bomb that building, and literally were like, they clipped it, they shipped it. They were like, this should lead the discourse. Thing is, I don't understand why people aren't more angry. I love that people are more angry at me than like the fact that an 18-year-old can buy two AR-15s on credit. It's not awesome. He can just buy it on credit. He didn't have to pay for it. He didn't have to worry about that. That's so insane. People don't. People are more angry about my stupid ass joke that resulted in, uh, let's think, zero harm to anyone. On the latest episode of Leftovers, a spinoff podcast from the H3 podcast, Ethan and Hassan invited and welcomed with open arms the great professor of economics, Dr. Richard Wolf. What was seemingly a very educational and enjoyable episode of Leftovers, it was soon the subject of immense ridicule by the H3 fanbase, specifically the subreddit. Although being such a minimal part of the show, so much so that I missed it entirely the first watch around, the criticism is regarding the war on Ukraine and what Hassan and Dr. Richard Wolf both had to say about it. Being a diehard fan of both Hassan and Ethan, while also politically aligning myself both with Dr. Richard Wolf and Hassan, thanks in large part to the Hasanabi broadcast. Podcast, I feel as though I'm able to give somewhat of a decent analysis on the whole situation. Although I'm extremely far from any type of expert on this war, I do find myself somewhat of an H3 expert. So I just like to give my take on the unwarranted scrutiny that is currently and often given to both Hassan and the H3 podcast. <laughs>
After getting into the discussion a little bit, Richard Wolff first brings up the Ukraine war when talking about the failed sanctions that were put onto Russia in response to the invasion. Look, the war in, the, in Ukraine, whatever else you think of it, was supposed to be over in a short time once the sanctions got going. They were called the mother of all sanctions. They would bring Russia to its knees. Go back and look at the, the press in February, March, and April of last year. That's what they were predicting. None of that has happened. None of it. And why? Because it turned out that Russia, which is a weak economic system and was before this war started, but Russia has really big and powerful friends, more of them each day. And they turned to those friends and they made a bad joke out of the mother of all sanctions, which hasn't stopped the war one iota. And adding more tanks and sending more shells isn't going to change that. Ethan then asks Dr. Richard Wolf what should have been the response from the United States after Russia invaded. What kind of policy is it that you would like to see in terms of uh, like how, how American, uh, America responded to the war in Ukraine instead of sanctions? And for all of Ethan's flaws, for which he has many, so many. I feel like for all of uh, for all of Ethan's like faults, and there are many of them. Oh, so let's many. Be real. I'm very pleased and somewhat surprised that Ethan could just sit there and listen, um, and feel comfortable enough asking a question that is very culturally heated right now, um, and just be willing to learn. Professor Richard Wolf then goes on to talk about how every empire there has ever been in this world has ultimately had to end at one point. And as a dying empire, at some point you simply need to acknowledge that any more fighting, no matter how big or small, it will simply be a net negative on your country. This opinion, however, and the analogy that Richard Wolf uses uh, is ultimately the fuel to the fire that causes all of this backlash. I think the best way is actually to remind everybody about American history. At a certain point, back in the 18th century, the, 19th, the people here in the United States decided that they were sick and tired of being a colony of Great Britain. So we broke away from the British Empire. We did that by means of a violent revolution. We fought a war with England, 1776. We've all learned about it in school umpteen times. And an amazing thing happened. The British Empire, which at that time ruled the world, to the amazement of everybody, the British were defeated by the Americans in that Revolutionary War. But they didn't give up. In 1812, we had another war where the British Empire decided again to try to squash the new emerging economic power of the United States. Two wars, they were defeated both times. Finally, the British got the memo. This not gonna work. You are not gonna undo the history uh, that you yourself helped to make. So what you ought to do is sit down and work out with the United States this new call. Get over your upset that your empire isn't growing anymore. Get over it. Recognize that your empire is now on the downturn and that a new power is arising, namely the United States. And they worked out a peace agreement that lasted a century. You want my answer? That's what we ought to be doing with Russia and China. Mm. Not go to one little war or not so little, one proxy war. Next, we'll have a war that isn't a proxy war. You know, we're on the edge of it anyway, almost every day. We'll do something in the South China Sea. We'll provoke one way or another, or we will be provoked. This is a dead end. It's, it's not in our interest. It's not in their interest. We need to live with this new emerging economic power. We don't need to keep trying to squash it. It doesn't 
work. This part of the podcast was quickly ripped apart by the H3 fan base on the subreddit midway through the show. This post reading, I just watched the Leftovers episode and the Ukraine segment was pretty troubling to me. The professor's analogy likening the US liberating themselves from the British Empire to Russia breaking away from the Western sphere of influence was nonsensical and run-of-the-mill Russian propaganda. I'm not quite sure how people hear Dr. Wolf say that using a country as a battleground for a war with another global power is a dead-end plan, and thinks he's saying Russia is somehow the good guys because they're fighting against the US. That's not at all what he's saying. He's simply illustrating that the Western sphere of influence is rapidly shrinking, and proxy wars are no longer going to be able to slow that down or stop it in any way. But I think the top comment under this post helped explain it a little further, um, because I think this whole analogy kind of went over a lot of people's heads and they couldn't really get past it and look at the greater argument. Personally, I felt like he wasn't likening them to show it's a good idea that Russia is attacking Ukraine. I think the interpretation is more on how it impacted the world on an economic level, not a Russians are being bullied by the West or they're fighting for their liberation type of war. The split from the UK and move into being a global power definitely rocked the world economy, and so will the split from dependence on Western consumption. This is another negative post from the subreddit that was written during the episode. After Watching Leftovers, I can't help but constantly give a side eye to Hassan's affinity with Russia. I get that he loves Russia so much that he had a flag of it behind him for years. First of all, Hassan had a USSR flag. It's not a Russia flag. And if you don't know the difference between the USSR and Russia at this point, you're just a moron. But blaming America for fueling a war horse is as incompetent as proclaiming Russia wouldn't have started a war with Ukraine in the first place, despite what happened to Crimea. What this comment fails to mention or consider at all is that this conflict did not start in February of last year. It didn't even start in 2014 when the United States orchestrated a coup d'etat against the Ukrainian democratically elected government, which at the time was a neutral government, but they replaced that government with a staunchly anti-Russian government because we knew it would lead to much more conflict between Ukraine and Russia. And this conflict didn't even start in 1991 when the USSR collapsed thanks to Western influence. This conflict has been happening all the way back since the end of World War II, when once Nazi Germany was no longer our number one global competitor, uh, we were now competing with the USSR and they became enemy number one at that point. So this conflict is way more complex than just something that's been happening for the past year. And that's what none of these comments are even mentioning or even considering in any way. Richard Wolf finishes this Ukraine discussion uh, with a really good point talking about how uh, sending more weapons and doing more war in Ukraine is only going to hurt more Ukrainians. Nobody wants this war in Ukraine. Above all, the people of Ukraine who are suffering beyond all words the destruction of their society. Who's benefiting out of this? I mean, American weapons it's, manufacturers? It's Excuse me? I said, American weapons manufacturers are. Yep. Um, yep. It seems like uh, those with the least to lose and the most to gain out of this are the ones that are pushing for it and pushing for the continuation of it, uh, whether it be Boris Johnson uh, back when he was the prime minister going into uh, Ukraine during uh, the first round of peace negotiations or, or a possible ceasefire and peace negotiation talks that were happening um, right. organized by Turkey. Or whether it be, uh, you know, Ned Price and numerous other American State Department officials uh, continuously talking about how uh, they are not interested in peace at all. I'm watching this back right now and I literally have no idea why Hassan got so much kickback for this. Because this is quite literally all he had to say about Ukraine. And I have no idea why anyone would disagree with calling for peace talks. Like I said, I did not expect for people to watch this and come out with such a negative view towards Hassan and Richard Wolf. And the subreddit was a total mess following this discussion right in the middle of leftovers. So much so that the mods went on a mass removal spree of all the posts mentioning uh, Richard Wolf and his take on Ukraine and Hassan's take on Ukraine. Uh, even any positive mention towards it, uh, a lot of those were removed as well. Two posts that I was going to use in this video were also removed, one of which being the most popular uh, anti-Hassan post coming out of this episode. And what it had said was that they could no longer watch left 
leftovers because of what Hassan had to say about Ukraine. And re-watching this, I just don't understand that considering Hassan had so little to say on the topic. Another post was of a screenshot of a Richard Wolff appearance on Russia Today, where three weeks after the invasion, he discussed the merits of it and the economics behind it. And the post on the subreddit was accusing the H3 podcast of platforming this Russian sympathizer who goes on state-owned media to push Russian propaganda. The claim that if you go on a Russian-owned media outlet that you're somehow a supporter of Russia is just an insane take. We all know who owns and controls media outlets here in America, but if you make an appearance on CNN or MSNBC or Fox News, no one's gonna call you an American propagandist just for solely making an appearance on that news network without taking anything of what you say into consideration. All in all, this controversy wasn't really much of anything. And all the negative posts talking about it were really overshadowed by all the positive posts discussing this new shift in leftovers. People were very appreciative of the Leftovers podcast heading in a direction where um, these sort of discussions with leftist thinkers um, really become sort of a staple of the show and something that will be returning in the future consistently. I love this recent episode and I hope they get more guests that are knowledgeable on Marxism or other kinds of anti-capitalist ideology. Listening to Richard Wolff has been a revelation. Obviously it is not possible to do this every week, but it would be nice if they saw this feedback and tried to give us more of these episodes. All in all, I think the reason for all this backlash towards Hassan is because so many young leftists in America and viewers of the Leftovers podcasts, uh, they agree with almost everything Hassan has to say. However, when it comes to discussing geopolitics and global affairs, Red Scare propaganda in America is just so powerful and it's been so powerful for the past 70 years that many people on the left have a really hard time getting past that barrier of understanding. Thanks so much for watching this video and just listening to what I have to say. I too am really excited for the future of Leftovers and this new format, as well as the future for this country uh, because young people like myself are increasingly moving leftward and every day becoming much more class conscious.